I am Shelly Miller, artist, art instructor, and owner of Inspired Brushworks Art Studio. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'll be teaching you the process I used to combine four photos into a composition for my latest memorial portrait commission. The four photos that we'll be using today are shown here, along with the composition that I created by combining them in Adobe Photoshop. Some background on the software. I'm using version 22.3.1, and I do pay a monthly subscription fee of approximately $10 to access it. Let me just say that it is worth every penny. I feel like it's taken my ability as an artist to design unique and interesting compositions to the next level, which helps to set me apart from the crowd and enhances the services I am able to provide my clients. Always a good thing. So without further ado, let's go to Photoshop and learn how this composition was created. Okay, here we are at the landing screen for Photoshop. This is the first screen that you will see upon opening the software. And the first step of this entire process will be to import the four images that we want to combine for this composition into the software. So we're gonna do those one at a time. <clears throat> and in order to do that, you'll go to the file menu and click open. Now, when I do that, it has automatically navigated me to the folder on my computer where these images are stored. So I'm going to pick the first one that I wanna import, which is the window itself. Just click on the file and click open. And you'll see that it has now opened in Photoshop. And to bring in the other three, it's the same process for each. Click File, Open. Now we'll bring in the other landscape. Click your file and click Open here. File, Open. Pick the photo of the little girl and click Open. And there she is. And the last one is Grandmom, so we'll hit File, Open. Click on the photo of the grandmother and again, click open. Now, at the top here, you can see all of the file names for the photos that we just imported. And you navigate between them simply by clicking on the file name. So there's the window, there's the landscape, there's the little girl, and there's the grandma. Okay, now a little explanation as to why I have a second landscape photo here. When I went through this process to create the composition, I noticed that this corn field that's in the foreground of this photo in the window was a little bit too busy and too distracting when I laid the transparent image of the grandmom over it. So I wanted something not as busy. So I went in search of a different landscape photo that I could put in this window and came up with this. <clears throat> so that's gonna be our first step, is to replace this picture that you're seeing through the window with this one. Now you will notice on this one that there is a border of blank white space around it, and we certainly don't want that showing through our window. So the first step is going to be to get rid of that. Over here on the left side, you will see a control panel and the fourth, sorry, fifth item down on the list is the crop tool. So you're just gonna click that and it will put borders that you can drag around the photo. In order to crop it, you just simply grab a corner and pull inward and then that will crop the photo to wherever you would like to. So I'm just going to go ahead and crop that and click the check mark up here. And you'll see that I still have a little bit of a border that I missed, so I'm gonna hit crop again and get rid of that. And again, hit the check mark. Okay, so now our photo's cropped. The blank white space around it is gone. 
And we want to go ahead with the process of moving this to the this photo and replacing here what's in the window with it. So in order to do that, we need to select it. And we're going to, in the control panel, pick this second option. It's a dotted square. That is your selection tool. You'll simply click and hold your mouse button, your left mouse button in the upper left-hand corner and pull downward to the bottom right corner in order to select the image that you want to move. Okay, and once I do that, now you can see that I've selected the entire photo. If you hold down your control key and hold down your left mouse button, you are able now to pull this photo. You go up and hold down the file name for the file that you want to move it into and bring it back down and then just drop it. Okay, and now you see that I have been able to overlay this photo on top of the window. Of course, the size and the position are not right, but we're gonna adjust that next. So in order to adjust the size and position of a photo that you've brought into another photo, the first thing you want to make sure is over here in this panel at the bottom right, you will see each layer. So we have a background layer that consists of the window and we have layer one, which is the photo we just brought in, this other landscape. You wanna make sure layer one is selected and that is the layer that you'll edit the size and position on. Go up to edit and click transform and choose scale. Now you can see that it has put a box around our photo that we can click in a corner and move in or out to adjust the size of it. So let's adjust the size down a little bit. Then if you just click on the photo, you can move it around. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna position it so that it is within this window and adjust the size until we have it a perfect fit in the window here. And then click the checkbox. So now we've been able to replace the photo that was in the window with the one that we brought in. You can see now the cornfield is gone. It's been replaced by this grass, which is much less distracting to lay the grandmom over. Okay, so now that I'm finished with that step, I'm going to navigate back to this file and I'm going to close it because we don't need it anymore since we've already done what everything we need to do with it. So just hit this X. It'll ask you if you want to save the changes and there's really no need to, so just say no. Okay, so now all we're left with is the window with the new landscape in it, the picture of the little girl, and the picture of the grandma. The next step is to bring the grandma's picture into the window. So we're gonna click on the photo of the grandma. Now you will notice that this background around her, we really don't want that to show up in the painting. So the first thing we're gonna do is isolate just the person away from the background and get rid of the background that's behind her. Up here at the top, you see an option to select and mask. You wanna click on that, which brings up other options. Right here, you will see select subject. You click on that and Photoshop will analyze the picture and try to figure out what subject it is that you are trying to bring in. Most of the time it does a pretty good job and um, gets it right. So in this case, it has selected her, uh, which is exactly what we want. And then we go down here and click okay. So when we click OK, it basically has removed the background from around her. Now, in order to bring her in to the window, again, we're going to hold down our control key and click our left mouse button and hold it down, which allows us to move her, go over to the window file name, and then bring your mouse back down into the window and then drop it. OK, so there she is. Now, she's a little bit too small. We want her bigger than that. 
And we also want to fade her out a little bit so that you can see some of that background through her since she is going to be an angel. We want her semi-transparent. Over here on the right, remember we have to make sure that we are working with the correct layer. This layer two is the layer uh, including the grandmom's picture that we just brought in and that is selected, so that's good. Now, as we did before, we'll go to edit, transform, scale. So let's size her appropriately and move her into the correct place in the window. So I want her about that big and then I'm gonna move her down into the corner here like so. And then just hit this check mark up here. Okay, now there she is. Now the only problem is she is not semi-transparent yet. So in order to do that, over here in this panel on the lower right, you will see an option for opacity. You wanna click that down arrow there and adjust it to about, let's try maybe 50% or 55%. About right there is pretty good. Okay, so now you can see that some of that landscape is shining through her, and that's exactly what we want since we do want her to be an angel. All right, so that step is done. Now we're going to go to the photo of the grandmom since we finished with that and close that, and we're not going to save the changes. No need to since we finished with it. So now, all that's left is the window that now has the new landscape and the grandma in it and this picture of the little girl, which we still have to bring over. So just like we did with grandma, we're going to isolate the little girl from the background that's behind her in this photo. And if you'll remember, we do that by clicking select and mask and then select subject. So Photoshop will go ahead and decide what it thinks the subject of this photo is, which it has it right again, the little girl, that's perfect. And then you click OK. So now you can see that it has isolated her and removed the background. Now you will notice up here that there's some shadows near her bow here, and there's a shadow over here that you may not want in the picture. So I'm gonna show you how to refine the selection that Photoshop has made as far as selecting the subject. You're gonna click on select and mask again, and then you will see a plus and a minus sign over here at the top left. Click on the minus and that will remove anything that you don't want. So I know we had a little shadow up here that we really didn't want. And there was a little shadow over here that we didn't want. And then click OK. So now you can see that it has removed some of that. There's still a little bit left that I want to get rid of. And this shadow over here is gone as well. So let's get rid of this little piece right here. Again, select and mask. Click the minus sign. And that shadow that we don't want was right here. and then click OK. And there's still a little piece there, but I'm not gonna worry about that because we don't need to paint that when we're uh, working on our painting. Okay, so to bring her in now, we're gonna hold down the, the control key, click the left mouse button, move her up to the window, bring her back down and drop her. Okay, so there she is. Now she is way too little and she's not in the right place. So again, we're gonna resize and reposition her. Over here, make sure the layer that she is in is selected, which is layer three. It's the latest layer that we brought in. Edit, transform, scale. Now we have our box around her that will allow us to resize and reposition her. So the first thing I'll do is increase the size of her. And then I want her about 
right here. And I want, I do want to make her a little bit bigger yet since she is closer than grandmom is. Okay. Now, once we have her where we want her and we have her in the right size, we just click this check mark up here. And there she is. Now we do not have to adjust the opacity on the little girl. We want her um, opaque, not transparent, because she is not an angel, only the grandmother is. So we're going to leave her just as is. So there you have it. Uh, this is now a finished composition design that is ready to go. Um, we can sketch from this and paint from this. So now I'm going to navigate to the photo of the little girl and close that since we are done and uh, no reason to save changes. Now, the last thing we have to do is save this file to our computer. So we're going to do file, save as, and it will ask you if you wanna save it to the cloud or on your computer. Um, when you do the monthly subscription to Photoshop, you will get a little bit of storage in the cloud that you can save your documents to that you uh, work on in Photoshop. I always save it to my computer just so that I have it whenever I need it in case I don't have an internet connection. So I'm going to click here, save on your computer. I'm going to navigate to, I can see at the top here, it's already navigated to the folder where I want to save it. I'm going to change it to a JPEG or a JPG. And then I will name it Painting Composition and click Save. And then it will ask you um, a couple things about your image quality and so on. I usually just click OK here. There's really nothing that I change. And it is now saved on my computer. So I can go ahead and close Photoshop. So what I, the point I'd like to make here is that this technique can be used to apply to other types of paintings besides portraits of pets or people. Um, for example, if you had a boat, a good picture of a boat that you liked, but you didn't really like the background that was behind it, uh, you could isolate the boat the way that we did with the grandmother or the little girl, remove the background and then lay it over top of a different background. So the possibilities for using this technique of combining photographs really is endless. Uh, the sky's the limit. And there's so many things you can do with this software. In addition to what I've shown you here today, I don't know much more about it other than what I have learned by trying to figure this technique out. Um, but I know it does have a lot of other um, capabilities beyond this. I will be adding a link in the description below to Amazon where you can get a monthly subscription to the Photoshop software. I usually do my subscriptions through Amazon only because uh, it makes it a little easier for me to manage all of my subscriptions in one place rather than having to navigate to several different websites to handle each one separately. Also in the description, I will be providing a link to my website as well as to the studio's social media pages. So if you'd like to go to the website and check that out or follow me on social media, that would be absolutely wonderful and I'd greatly appreciate the support. Also, if you liked today's tutorial and you found the content helpful, give us a like on the video. And also if you're new to our YouTube channel, uh, we'd appreciate it if you consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell icon so that you can be notified each time we upload new content. So everyone, that's it for today's tutorial. I very much appreciate you watching and appreciate the support. You guys have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.